Hi, I'm Lisa Faith Phillips, and I'm an invited expert for W3C. And we're going to share a presentation with you. The Digital Audio Revolution. As I said, I'm Lisa Faith Phillips, founder and executive producer of Women's Power Toolkit and a digital consultant. I had the pleasure of giving a presentation about digital audio revolution last year at the International Digital Conference in Paris, and this is an updated version of that. I worked in publishing, which was such a great experience. And let's see if I can. Moving uh, to the presentation, the power of the voice telling a great story or sharing knowledge touches the soul. A spoken word revolution has taken place and is using transformative technology to make it easy to listen to a gifted narrator tell a great story in podcasts and audiobooks. In 2020, with COVID-19 pandemic, audio consumption continues to grow as people stuck at home seek news and stories from a comforting human voice. Audiobook sales are up eight years in a row as a result of these great technology changes, traveling with your cell phone, your library travels with you, and the ease of audiobooks digitally has made it inviting for a large new audience. Audiobooks continue to be the fastest growing segment in publishing. The Audio Publishers Association reports U.S. audiobook sales in 2019 totaled 1.2 billion, up 16 percent from the previous year, with a corresponding increase in units. This continues the eight-year trend of double-digit revenue growth. In 2019, sales for audiobooks beat ebook sales, which had reached 983 million for the first time. The average number of audiobooks listened to per year increased to 8.1 in 2020, up from 6.8 in 2019. The most popular audiobook genres continue to be mysteries, thrillers, and suspense. The number of audiobooks each individual listens to is going up as transformative tech propels audio consumption. As most listen on their smartphone, they travel with their library. 73% of users used a smartphone to listen to at least one audiobook in 2019, up from 29% in 2017. 60% of respondents own a smart speaker, and 46% of smart speaker owners have used it to listen to an audiobook, again, up from 31% in 2019. Audiobooks are creating a new audience. Unlike ebooks, which are often seen as a replacement for the physical book, audiobooks are converting consumers to a new way of experiencing the story. According to Richard Lennon, editorial director of Penguin Random House Audio UK, the audience for audiobooks is largely distinct from buyers of print books. Good news for publishers. A younger audience discovers the pleasure of audiobooks. Original content and innovative productions bring great word of mouth and new listeners. 57% of frequent audiobook listeners are under age 45. That's up from 51% in 2019. Here's a great example of an inventive audiobook, John Cleese's So Anyway. They added new content that hadn't been heard before, as well as spontaneous comments by John Cleese as he read it and a cameo from Michael Palin. And the audiobook was won the gold in the nonfiction category at the New York Festival's Radio Program Awards. Publishers expand audio production to meet demand. Major audio publishers such as Audible, Hachette, HarperCollins, Macmillan, Penguin Random House, and Simon & Schuster have been investing in opening more studios and going deeper into backlist to increase the titles available in audio. In 2019, this resulted in an 18% increase in the number of new audiobook titles released, with over 60,000 new titles produced, up from 44,000 new titles in 2018. 
Publishers test new immersive listening experiences. Amanda DiCerno, head of audio Penguin Random House in the US, spoke about it recently. While the majority of audiobooks we produce are voiced by a single narrator, we're always experimenting with new techniques to create an immersive listening experience. We're producing more full cast recordings, like audiobook of the year finalist Beastie Boys book, narrated by Mike D and Ad Rock, along with 40 of their friends and collaborators. Graphic novels are also being turned into audiobooks. In 2019, Marvel and Dreamscape Media launched superhero audiobooks with many of their most popular graphic novels recorded at Oz Audiobooks. Already over 35 different titles have been converted with another 10 planned for 2020. The New York Times now promotes audiobook bestsellers each month. Uh, and Pamela Paul, the editor of the New York Times Book Review, is quoted as saying, the vibrant growth of audiobooks in the industry has created a need for an impartial, reliable source for tracking and reporting the top selling audiobooks across the country. And of course, the audio gold rush brought new vendors and consolidation in the audiobook market. As you probably know, Amazon's ebook and e-reader strategy dominated the ebook market. So did their audio strategy. I had the good fortune working at Random House of working with Audible in the early years when it was just starting. And I would go out to a strip mall in near Newark, New Jersey and meet with them. Random House had invested in them early on. They launched in 1995, but were bought by Amazon in 2008 for $300 million. Of course, Amazon having such a large book and ebook market is a good synergy, but hard to watch as everything goes under the Amazon umbrella. With distribution, innovation, marketing power, and low price subscription, aggressive publisher deals, and creative content, Audible takes over the audiobook market in the US. And of course, they created a lot of interesting innovation in 2011 with the Audiobook Creation Exchange. They connected rights holders, narrators, and producers to create new audiobooks outside of the publishing world. A year later, Audible reported it received more titles from ACX than from its top three audio providers combined. WhisperSync that allows you to read on your Kindle and hear the audio. A A-list collection showcased Hollywood stars reading classics in 2012. Then they brought in in 2015, the former VP of NPR programming joined them to create original content. Audible channels, a podcast platform launched in 2016, but by 2018, Audible channels scaled down. The head of original content stepped down and the content team downsized. Probably not quite as easy as Audible thought. Apple, who had been just selling really audible on the audiobook channel, ended the deal with Audible Amazon in late 2017. And with the end of iTunes in 2019, we're seeing a new push from Apple for growing audio and the speaker market. In 2017, Kobo's, Kobo's launched less expensive audiobook subscription offer. Canadian ebook company Kobo, which was bought by Japanese e commerce conglomerate Rakuten in 2012, launched their audiobook service in late 2017. Their competitive advantage was a 30% lower monthly subscription price, though with a smaller catalog than Audible. In 2018, Walmart contracted with Kobo to sell audiobooks and ebooks and Kobo devices. So it's been fascinating to watch they, their ability to stay in the game. To grow smart speaker sales, Google entered the audiobook market in 2018. Interestingly, they just offer single sales as opposed to subscriptions. Consolidation followed growth. In 2017, audiobooks.com, the largest competitor in Audible to Audible, was acquired by RB Media, a new conglomerate led by recorded books. In July of 2018, RB Media was sold to private equity firm KKR. In 2020, Overdrive, the largest library audiobook and ebook distributor, was bought by KKR under its RB Media arm. Richard Sarnoff, who used to be my boss at Random House, 
was quoted as saying, we love the industry media and its growth, and we think it will continue. He's now head of chairman of media, entertainment, and education for KKR, and sees audiobooks as an incremental way of enjoying books and a growth market. Now with the pandemic, we've seen a lot of giveaways propelling more audiobook growth during the pandemic. With the global pandemic resulting in bookstores being closed for three months or longer and people stuck at home, more people are switching to digital audiobooks. Major retailers started giving away free audio content, helping to grow the digital audiobook market. One of the most downloaded titles, not surprisingly, was the first audiobook in the Harry Potter franchise. Pottermore made it available in ebook and audiobook free to consumers and libraries. Scribd, you might have seen, had their COVID 30 day giveaway. In March, at the start of the pandemic shutdown, Scribd CEO Trip Adler announced that his reading subscription service, Scribd, would offer free access to its library of over 1 million ebooks, audiobooks, and more for 30 days with no commitment or credit card information required. The company is also exploring new ways to connect readers with one another and to authors by providing curating reading, curated reading recommendations to individuals across their social platforms. It'll be interesting to see how they do going forward with that. And I hope some of you have been using your public library more during the pandemic because the public library has seen audiobook and ebook downloads skyrocket. All of the digital wholesalers, such as Hoopla, Overdrive, Midwest Tape, and Biblioteca, are having record audiobook and ebook loans during the pandemic. 10.1 million digital books were borrowed from public libraries worldwide via Overdrive's Libby app in the last week of March, which represents a nearly 30% increase from the same week last year. Overdrive saw 25,000 digital library cards created through their instant digital card service between March 1st and March 22nd, which was a large increase. Here you can see on the side, this is the Libby app on the cell phone, and you can go on and download eBooks and audiobooks quite easily. Now, of course, the smart interactive speakers fueled the audio revolution as well. Smart speakers take off. Now about 60 million people in the US own 157 million speakers. Here you see the growth curve dramatically shown with the number of smart speakers in US households growing by 135% in two years. By 2020, 50% of all searches across the internet will be voice-based and 30% of searches will be done without a screen is the belief. Smart speakers smart, sparked new content and innovation. The BBC with Racina Sound created a successful choose your own adventure series with the Expect Your Chamber series. Users guided by answering questions which become part of the narrative, helping to make the whole experience immersive. Hachette Book Group developed Classroom 13 Skill, a choose your own adventure series created specifically for Alexa and the Echo device and adapted from popular illustrated chapter book series. It is activated and controlled by voice commands directed at Alexa. Smart speakers created a new market for short form audio content. Publishers are repurposing audiobook content into short audio segments, which work for daily or frequent sending. A good examples of where it works, inspirational daily affirmations, self-help advice, Christian devotionals. Publishers have been adding calls to action to purchase the books, but with limited success. Now, of course, there are concerns about smart speaker effect on competition. While in Europe last year, I had read about in France, the Hadopi and the CSA published a joint study on voice assisted speakers and market impact. With Amazon, Google, and Apple dominating the market, <clears throat> it's clear that there will be preferences possibly for their own services. The government oversight will be needed to ensure that smart small players have access to this market. Podcasting becomes the hot new thing. Interestingly, with audiobook growth, uh, the podcasting world is also getting a lot of attention. And as we know, it's so easy to create a podcast. I've started doing it. 
uh, with the Women's Power Toolkit, inviting different interesting experts to talk about their passion and their career trajectory. Podcast demand and production explodes. In April 2020, there are over 1 million podcasts in the U.S., up from 550,000 in 2018. 38 plus million people listen to podcasts every week in 2019. 55% or 155 million of U.S. population has listened to a podcast, up from 51% in 2019. It'll be fascinating to see how, how it continues to grow and, of course, what is the business model. There's lots of great podcasts, but how are people going to make money to afford to keep doing them? Of course, for bigger companies, free as a gateway to purchase works well. Advertising supported. Donation supported, such as National Public Radio. Subscription services are trying to make it work and seem to be having some success. Micropayments were done often in China and are being experimented with here in the US. Tipping, uh, Himalaya.com, which was funded largely by the Chinese, tested that, though it did not seem to work as well as they'd hoped. Free con pod pod Free podcasts can be a great way to purchase. Here we see a lot of retail companies using podcasts as getting people interested in their products and learning more about them. For audiobooks, Audible and Overdrive and Scribd have all launched their own in-house podcast unit to build their brand. The strategy, if you excite the consumer with a good free content, they will end up purchasing a subscription or additional audiobooks. Platforms innovate and merge for improved podcast experience. For those of you who use Spotify in June 2019, they improved their podcast uh, presentation. And now in 2020, they're announcing they're moving into audiobooks. Investors gambling on new podcast platforms. In 2019, Luminary got a lot of attention with their new po podcast platform, which launched with a hundred million dollar investment, trying to shake up podcasting with a premium model at $7.99 a month. Here were pictures on the subway when that was launching, filling the subway of New York. Of course, they were up against free and other low price podcast subscriptions already on the market, Stitcher at $4.99, Wondery at five. In January 2020, Luminary lowered its monthly subscription price in the US to $4.99 and replace their CEO, so time will tell. In 2019, China invested big in US podcasting with Himalaya Media raising $100 million to launch their new podcast site called Himalaya.com, which offered original existing content with a tipping model of small payments to the preferred podcast, which had worked well in China. Setting up Himalaya as an independent entity based in San Francisco, was, was very strategic due to the tension already having built between the US and China, as well as concerns of censorship. In 2020, they changed their content focus to emphasize learning with listen and learn from legends. We'll see how they do going forward. And what is the future of audio? More inventive original content and productions? More celebrity voices as narrators? testing different business models, subscriptions, micropayments, tipping, aggregation of audio and podcast companies for growth, greater content integration with social media, innovations in voice SEO, and channel distribution improvements for consumer ease and adoption. Authors, publishers, and disruptors will continue to innovate to bring the magic of storytelling to evolving transmedia channels, that fit our ever-changing lives. Thank you. Let's keep in touch. I'm Lisa Faith Phillips. You can find me on Twitter at Lisa Faith and my website, Lisa, lisafaithphillips.com. Thank you. Congratulations, W3C, for launching your new New York Metro chapter. <laughs>